This could be the start of something big. Nikon has registered a name, Z Cinema, and that alone is enough to turn heads. It's not just a random name drop. This feels like a clear, focused step into a new space. Now to be clear, we're still early. Nikon hasn't officially launched a Z Cinema camera body yet, but we've already seen signs that set that tone. You've probably heard about Nikon's recent partnership with RED. And yes, you could argue Nikon already entered cinema through that deal. But Z Cinema name changes things. It's Nikon drawing a line and saying, all right, we're doing this. It feels like more than a collab. It's Nikon starting to carve out a place in high-end filmmaking, not only by working with RED, but maybe by building something under their own name too. Let's rewind for a second. RED recently released V-Raptor XZ mount and Komodo XZ mount. These are proper cinema cameras, no compromise, but with one major shift, they use Nikon's Z mount, and that's big. RED didn't just randomly adopt Z mount. Nikon owns RED now. This isn't a casual collab. This is strategic, and this co-development is shaping up under the new Z cinema banner. These two red bodies are first signs of that direction, and they're not budget tools. They're built for serious productions. The V Raptor X packs an 8K VV global shutter sensor. The Komodo X carries a 6K Super 35 global shutter. Both now accept Nikon Z mount lenses, which means access to the growing Nikkor Z lineup. With FTZ adapter, even older F mount lenses including vintage glass, are back in play. That flexibility could become a defining trait of Z Cinema series. But this move was never just about adding Z mount compatibility. It was Nikon signaling something louder. Their glass is ready for real cinema work. And RED is opening that door wide. Now, both of these RED cameras are being grouped under the Z Cinema name. That's a shift. It raises a question. How far is Nikon going to take this? Because if RED is putting Z mounts on cinema rigs and Nikon just locked down the Z cinema trademark, it looks like we're witnessing the beginning of something bigger. Let's talk about what we might expect or hope for from Nikon's Z cinema lineup. Now to be clear, Nikon is not leaving RED behind or trying to outshine it. In fact, a smarter play here would be to let RED continue doing what it does best, while Nikon carves out a more accessible mid-range lane of its own. Think about it. Most filmmakers don't need a V-Raptor or Komodo for every project. Those are high-end, often rental-only tools. But a more compact, video-first camera? Something in a Z6 style body, but with proper cinema features? That has real potential and Nikon's already proven they can deliver internal raw video. Cameras like Z9 are solid performers with excellent thermal management. They don't overheat easily, even during long shoots. Their wide Z mount also provides huge flexibility in lens design, enabling sharper corners, faster apertures, and less distortion. If you've ever shot video on a photo lens, you know the pain, focus breathing, clunky focus rings, inconsistent handling. Now imagine Nikon's best glass, like the 35mm or 85mm f1.2, rebuilt for video. Cinema housings, smooth manual control, and consistent results. That's the kind of move that makes you stop adapting lenses and start trusting the system. But to truly compete, they'll need more than just nice glass. Dual native ISO is high on everyone's wish list. It's something Sony nailed with their FX series, delivering cleaner low light footage and smoother dynamic range. Built in ND filters, ideally electronic, would also be huge. RED already supports that via adapter packs and it makes a massive difference on set. Another thing, a cinema body needs to be rig friendly that means proper mounting points, 
smart port placement, audio inputs that don't need adapters, clean HDMI, or better yet, SDI. And their menu system? It needs to feel built for filmmakers, not just photographers dabbling in video. Then there's lenses. Right now, we're using photo glass on cinema rigs. And yeah, it works. But Nikon has their chance to release a dedicated Z Cinema lens line. Think purpose-built cine glass with geared focus, consistent apertures, and maybe full-frame coverage throughout. Canon has its CNE line, Sony has Cine Alta, but those get expensive fast. If Nikon can hit that sweet mid-tier spot, it could change the scenario, especially if it maintains the signature Nikkor look. Of course, Nikon could take a higher-end approach too, maybe a box-style body, something shaped like Red's cameras but running Nikon internals. If they go that route, it has to feel like an evolution, not just a repackaged Z9 with a few tweaks. Because here's a truth. For this Z Cinema idea to work, it has to be built for filmmakers, not photographers who happen to shoot video. Indie filmmakers, doc shooters, content creators, they need tools that are made for motion. Right now, most of them are jumping between stills cameras and cinema rigs. And that transition isn't always smooth. File formats don't match. Color science shifts. Mounts change. If Nikon can build a full Z Cinema ecosystem that plays nice across the board, from vloggers to working DPs, they'll be answering a real demand. And the timing couldn't be better. Nikon already makes some of the best hybrid cameras on the market. But this move says they're done just supporting video. They're ready to lead in it. So, what's so special about these new Red Z mount cameras? It's wide. It's close to the sensor. That opens up room for better lens designs, cleaner edges, faster apertures, and less distortion. It's built for today's optics. Take V-Raptor X Z mount, full frame, 8K, global shutter, massive dynamic range, add Red's color science, and you've got a top tier tool then there's Komodo X Z mount, smaller, Super 35, 6K, also with a global shutter. Shoots up to 80 FPS in 6K and 120 in 4K. That's ideal for handheld work, gimbals or dock setups. Both work natively with Nikon Z lenses, including power zoom on 28 to 135mm f4 PZ. Autofocus is snappier, more reliable, and you can mount classic F-glass through FTZ adapter. That kind of flexibility is rare at this level, and it makes these cameras more appealing to creators who already own Nikon gear, or want to use vintage lenses without hassle. It's about giving pros gear that works with glass they trust, or gear that doesn't cost a fortune just to get started. Red has deep roots in Hollywood and pro-level sets. It's trusted, it's proven. Nikon, on the other hand, is still earning its place in cinema. In photography and hybrid shooting, they've come a long way. But pure cinema, this is new ground. That's why the expectations have to be balanced. If this were just Red releasing cameras, the industry would already assume top-tier performance. But with Nikon stepping into the creative lead, even while partnering with RED, we need to see how it plays out. To their credit, Nikon has real strengths. Sensor design, optics, mechanical reliability. But there are still gaps. Autofocus has improved, but it's not yet at Canon or Sony's level. Their color science has evolved, but it's still finding its identity in video. And firmware? That's an area that could make or break this push. Look at the industry. Canon has Cinema EOS. Sony has FX and Cine Alta. Panasonic has its Varicam and box cams. Even Fuji is showing up now. Nikon, not yet, but that's starting to change. With Z Cinema, Nikon's laying out three clear lanes. One for photo-first hybrid shooters like Z6, 
Z7 and Z8. One for Red's high-end cinema rigs, and one for something new. Nikon built video first cameras that land between the two. That's the lane where a camera like an FX3 or FX30 competitor could live. Compact, riggable, made for motion, with internal ND, time code, full size ports, great heat management, and video first design. That's a space Nikon has never played in, but the demand is real because filmmaking is everywhere now. YouTube, documents, advertisements, short films, social, everyone shooting, and everyone wants better tools. If Nikon wants in, they've got to bring more than log profiles and raw video. They need a full motion ecosystem, and Z Cinema might be the beginning of that system. So here's where we're at. Red isn't going anywhere. Nikon's still in photography. But yes, Nikon is making a push into cinema. A new direction that could stretch from compact mirrorless style video bodies to full-on production rigs. And we're here for it. Let us know. What kind of Z cinema body do you want to see? Because if Nikon's listening, now's the time to speak up. So comment below your thoughts. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, Give it a like and subscribe for more camera news and reviews.